say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to the Farmer's Kitchen. We're indoors. Yes, we are. Because it's raining. It is. This morning it wasn't raining. We took a, a walkabout on the farm here because we like to forage and a lot of times we find mushrooms or or greens or something right. we can bring back. We do that. This morning was a little unusual. We went out and I saw one box turtle, two, three, four, five, right around each other. They were all together, that's right. Now there's a reason for that. This time of year it's May. A lot of times you'll see crossing the road, mm -hmm. bless their little hearts, and they get squashed. Yeah. They're looking for mates. They mm -hmm. got their little heads stuck out and they're going as fast as they can. So we found five in this little spot. Now, the thing about these particular box turtles are is that they're long lived. They can live from 25 to 35 years. Wow. In captivity, I've heard of them being up to 100 years old. Wow. A lot of the old times used to scratch marks on them. They used to claim really? one, one here was from <laughs> Daniel Boone. He put his name on it. The female will mate around, she gets around, and she can store the male parts inside of her until she decides to lay eggs. She can keep that four or five years, really? so she doesn't have to breed every year. Now usually she has up to five eggs. She'll hmm. lay them and they'll come out just crawling out of the ground. They bury their eggs just like really? most turtles do. The male has a red eye. That's how you can tell. But it's unusual to see that many. Now for those saying, oh, why'd they move them? We didn't move them. We're very conscious of where they are and what they do. When we're running heavy equipment, we make sure that we look out for them as Great. best we can. So they weren't moved, they weren't harmed. I thought that, you remember Taryn had one when she was here when she was she little. She called it Duder. Duder, and I thought that was Duder, but then I saw five Duders, so mm -hmm. I don't know which one is Duder. You cannot raise these or sell these in the state of Kentucky as pets. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would like to do that, but we don't do that here. So again, they weren't moved or harmed, but it was fun to see that. Also, when we were looking for mushrooms, we found a black snake. This is an eastern rat snake. Now, this was this past season, but take a look. Now, a lot of people might say this is a king snake. It's not. This is an eastern rat snake, and the king snake will have more white markings all across its body. This is a beneficial animal to have around. They eat voles, mice, birds, eggs. If they get in your chicken coop, they will eat your chicken eggs yeah. as well. So, Eastern Rat Snake, I came up on, on this and almost stepped on him, mm -hmm. and his tail is back and forth. I slowed it down. Watch this tail in slow motion. He's trying to act like something a little bigger and badder than what he is, and that really puts a lot of people off when they hear that tail They would go. me. I would, yeah. I would not know. You'd probably swing a hoe at I him. would have probably chopped him if I saw him in half. So anyway, again, this is an Eastern Rat Snake, good snake. You want him around your house. They'll get the chipmunks mm, and the mice. Snakes are, I don't like snakes. I'm sorry. I think we have some footage I of you like, and a black snake mm -hmm. one time. It didn't go well. I don't like snakes. Oh, woo! Let me see, breathe. I'm telling you. We have a very aggressive. I don't. Now keep them. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going to do it. Okay. It's a black rat snake. Now let me show you. These are good animals. <gasps> Timmy. <laughs> All, right. All right. Now he's, he, listen. He can't hurt you. Okay. All right. I now, hate snakes. I know you do. I know you do. Now let's explain what he's doing. Now, tell me the truth. When we went down the hill and I came carrying him down and you were on tomorrow, what did you say? Where's my shovel? No, what'd you say? You said throw him in front of me. Yeah, because I, I, if I saw him, I'd run him over. My grandma, if she had any kind of garden tool on her and a snake came, you used it. All right, now, okay. let's explain. He's, he's listen, making noise. Listen. See his tail? He's rattling his tail. Do you know how many times that gets, <laughs> that gets that poor snake killed? This snake, now you can see a little bit of pattern on him. Listen, listen to his tail. Watch his tail. Shake. He's ready to get me. No, he's not going to get you. He's already bit me twice, but okay. they can't hurt you. 
He eats mice. Ooh. He eats rats. We could catch those with the trap. Now, he is a farmer's friend. They used to keep these around silos mm -hmm. and places like that because they really do take care of the critters that eat, you know, their corn and things like that. Look at the shape of the head. Notice that it has round pupils. A poisonous snake will have elliptical pupils. In the United States, there's only one poisonous snake that has round eyes, and that's a coral snake. Elliptical is like a cat, you know, the up and down. They also have heat sensors, or they call them pit vipers. They have pits. So he's only got his little nose holes that he breathes through. He's very cranky because he can't see too well. And you notice he's not real, he's not trying to take off because he can't see. I'm gonna put him up here by the port somewhere and hope he gets in there and gets our little mice and all those little critters. They maybe can scare people as they come over. That's nice. You sure you don't wanna hold I'm, him or I'm kiss him? I'm good. There? He can stay. You hey, good? hey, hey, hey. I'm gonna take him and let him go. All right. Now, most people would not imagine that you would ever want to have this around your house. I but agree. Because <laughs> I want it here. But that being said, that's what we've seen around the woods lately. We have been outside some today, so I called Kelly and I called Nikki, and I said, what do you want for dinner tonight? We were good last weekend. We had pasta with mushrooms. Didn't yeah. even have any meat. We didn't go freezer diving. We went to the store to see what was on sale, and it was pork chops, boneless pork chops. Yummy. So tonight we're going to make something really good. We're just going to spoil ourselves tonight. Now this is olive oil. Again, we try to fry with olive oil as much as we can. So it's not guilt free, but it's pretty <laughs> dang on close. That's right. All right. So now you've probably seen this before, but we're going to take this pork and I've already tenderized it to some degree and I'm going to put it in flour. I've got some seasoned buttermilk here with some egg. Got some good tela cherry pepper in there. My favorite pepper. I'm going to make sure that gets on every bit of that surface. Then I'm going to come back with my seasoned flour, and you can use whatever kind of seasoned flour you like. The seasoned flour will adhere to that egg, so we get this all ready to go. Get it all seasoned up. We've got our oil nice and hot. And what do we have here, Mrs. Farmer? Yum, Papa. Do you smell it's it? Same, I do. That, that, that seasoning smells good. <laughs> you can put anything in there you want in your seasoned flour. You can buy pre-prepared stuff or make your own. Now, she was really on fire for what she wanted today. You wanted a sandwich I with? I did. I want pork. I want Swiss cheese. I want coleslaw. I want barbecue sauce. Even pickles. I want pickles. You even said let's slice some pickle beets and put on that yes, sandwich. Yes, that would be delicious. So now as I'm fantasizing about this food that will be in front of us shortly, you know, food is an adventure. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be stuck with the same old thing every day. You should start experimenting with things that you've never had before and you find these combinations then you'll use it over here, then you'll use it over there, and you think, okay, this would work over here. Then slight variations to suit whatever recipe you're looking for. And next thing you know, you're making your own stuff. Okay. Now this is easy, this is a sandwich. But we just started thinking about all the things you could put on a sandwich. This is my favorite way for you to make pork. Uh, I love it like this. It's tender it and delicious. delicious. So as this is slowly turning golden brown, let's talk about something else in the woods right now. I've seen a lot of people talking about pokeweed. Poke. Mm -hmm. Some people fry it, some people boil it and make greens out of it. Here's a big caution sign. See this, boop, boop, boop. Watch out. Every part, every part of the poke plant is poison. Really? Root, stem, leaves, berries. Some people can brush up against them and have a horrible really? reaction, allergic reaction. Every part of that plant is poisonous. I don't think I'd touch it. Well. I would recommend, if you don't know exactly what you're doing, to stay away from it. Yeah. The people that do eat it, and I've eaten it, and I enjoyed it, but here's what I know, and here's what the old timers would do. Some people would say, boil it for 10, 20 minutes, two to three times. So each time that you boil it, change the water. The toxins really? come out, yes. So the toxins come out of that leaf, and, and the toxins are, are pretty serious toxins. So why even mess with it? Well, it's tradition, and a lot of okay. folks around Kentucky here love it. I love it. But, like I said, proceed with caution. If you have never done it before, or don't know how to do it, I would highly recommend you not do it or have somebody do it that knows what to do. Yeah. So, again, I'm just tenderizing that pork straight to the flour, no seasoning. Oh, I'm looking so forward to this. To the egg wash. Make sure it, every little spot is covered. Now to the seasoned mix. Make sure you get all that covered because you want that golden brown seasoning on there. Those look delicious. Hey, look at there. 
Wow. You want to eat that right now, don't I, you? I nope. do. Nope. I do. Nope. I have to wait. You gotta wait. You okay. Gotta wait. One sandwich for each one of us. All right. Now, this is a decadent side. Kelly was talking about. Let's take some tater tots. She's. I think she saw somebody take some tater tots yeah. and stuff them with different things. I've seen them put cheese and peppers and all kinds of weird yeah. stuff on it. I thought, okay, how about? Actually, she said something about buffalo chicken the other day. Oh wow! So what if you took cream cheese? Mm -hmm. Think about this. You take cream cheese. We take our chicken and put in there as well. Okay. Then we take some buffalo and put in there as well. Let's put some ranch seasoning, some dry ranch seasoning in there, okay? Yummy. <laughs> then we take some chives and put in there as well. That's all your favorite stuff, and you love tater tots. That sounds good to me. Let's so make Kelly, it. this was kind of Kelly's idea, and I'm all for it. Sounds good. Because we went to a restaurant the other day and they had tater tots, and we <laughs> ate piles and piles of tater tots because they're so healthy. <laughs> they are healthy. Let's get this cleaned up now the way, and we'll start our new recipe. Yes. Tonight, I just want to be totally ornery. I like when you're like this. It makes me happy. Tater tots, prepared tater tots. Yes. But all the fixings on, on this is going to be just a little bit different. Speaking of tater tots, we're going to try to make a tater tot cup. Yeah. And we're going to stuff that with good stuff. So go ahead and let's uh, pop them in there. We're going to do, and Kelly said put four in each one to start, and we're just going to let those cook 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to. Now, lots of people are doing this. this is very popular right now. But when she said something about tater tots, I'm like, I'm in. I like tater I can do tots. That. So we each get three. Actually, I, you know, I got enough for one more left. Or no, no, that's, that's enough. All right, we each get three. I think that'll be plenty. That's good. Because we're stuffing it full of stuff. All right, we're going to cook these 10 minutes and then we're going to. 400? Yes, 400 degrees and we're going to smash them down so it makes it like little cups. Perfect little uh, cups for us. I'm digging Perfect. it. Perfect. So you're making a stuffing for our tater tots. Yes, yes. so what we're going to do is we're going to put some cream cheese in here. I'm going to heat it up just a little bit. I'm not going to. I'm not going to cook it per se. I just want it to mix up easier. I'm going to put some chicken in there. And I'm going to say, all right, we got nine little cups to fill up. So if I had to guess, that's probably two cups of chicken. And I'm going to use most of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this all kind of melt together. I'm going to come in. <laughs> You're making like a buffalo chicken. Oh, yeah, buffalo chicken. That's one of your favorites. Kelly said something about buffalo chicken the other day and has not left my mind. So that's probably, I would say that's at least four or five tablespoons. If you want to make your own buffalo sauce, you ought to call it buffalo butter sauce. Yeah, that's delicious. It took me years to figure out what is that depth of flavor that we're mm -hmm. missing. Butter. Yeah, butter's good. Now, if you want to make your own buffalo sauce, just go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com, take a look, but it suits us just fine. Now I'm gonna take some dry ranch seasoning and put in there. So Yummy. what do we got? What do we got? We've got cream cheese, we've got chicken, we have buffalo sauce, we have ranch seasoning, and I would say that's that's a good tablespoon and a half right oh, yeah. there. I'll put a little bit of chives in here and we'll just let that warm up just ah, a little bit. You're gonna bit heat that up pretty hot, yeah, aren't you? That's not, that's not real hot. That's pretty mild actually. We'll let that warm up just a little bit more. And then when we put it in our little tater tot cups. Say tater tot cups five times. No. Say tater, three times. Tater tot cups, tater tot cups, tater tot cups. I did good. I can't do it. No. We're going to take that, when it's all mixed up, put it in the cups. Yes. Put mozzarella cheese on top of that, a little more Ooh. chives. Put it in the oven, let that cheese brown. Sounds good to me. <laughs> then we'll put our sandwich together. So we're getting close. All right, now you see how everything's kind of, I'm flinging everything all over the kitchen here. Looks good. Smells good. <sighs> Have you tried it? Did you taste it? Not yet. I know what it tastes like. Okay. So there's what it's going to look like when it goes into the tater tot cup. Yum. Tater, tater tot cup. Yes, tater tot. You did good. Tater say tot. It, say it five times. Tater tot cup. Tater tot. Can't do it. <laughs> look at that. Yummy. That's kind of beautiful. Yes, it is. And the smell is just outstanding. Now, if you wanted that a little hotter, you could put some red pepper flakes in there. I think it's hot you enough. You put some jalapeno I in there. I think it's hot you enough. You put some bacon in there. You put whatever you want. Yes. But we're going to, oh. Are you excited? I'm very excited because I'm starving. How long we got? Like a minute. All right, so let's get a system going here. You take your bigger thing first. Yeah, and this is like smash them. This is like a quarter one of our quarter cup measuring. Say cups. smash. Say smash. <laughs> We're gonna smash these. Smash. Smash. Smash them down. Smash. That's how you say it. Isn't smash. It? Smash. That's Kentucky. Smash. And you say smash. Smash. -a. That's Michigan. This is quarter cup measuring cup, and then. Little shot glass, that might work. I'll smash it. 
Ooh, right to the bottom. How does that look? Beautiful. I think they're cute. They're not perfect, but look at we're just making little cups here. I think they look good. Nice. What do you think? Wait till they get this bad kind, at them. This is kind of fun. We're gonna crank that up to about 450 now. Shape these up as best you can. Let them get good and crisp in there. I think they're cute. They are cute. And they're tater tots. Three each gonna be shot. enough? Is that gonna be enough? Yeah. All right. We're having a huge sandwich. All right, I'm gonna put these in for another right. 10 minutes. Another 10 minutes. And this is 450. 450. Ooh, those look good. That smells amazing. Now what's gonna happen now? We're loading this up with our beautiful buffalo chicken mixture. I put too much in that first one, but I'll eat that one. Okay, I figured you would. I just wanna eat these right out of this pan. We come back, a little more chives. I like my chives. Yes, they're delicious. Mozzarella, or as Taryn used to call it, mozzarella. Mozzarella. <laughs> she made her, but she did make some good macaroni cheese. She that, did. She? She's quite the little cook. And we're gonna put that in and just brown it up for a few minutes. When that mozzarella gets a little brown on it, we're ready to roll. Then we're gonna fix our sandwiches up. All right, back in the oven. Oh, would you Yum. look at that. Now at this point, you can come back with a little more cheese if you want it. Oh, those look delicious. Now, you know what's gonna be fun later? Hmm. I'm gonna take that mixture that we still got the chicken and stuff, and I'm gonna dip crackers in that. You'll eat all night long, won't you? Oh, yeah. So what we're gonna do is put our bread in the butter. Yummy. For extra flavor. Just get a little bit of brown on there. <laughs> See where we're going? I do. So. When we thought about this, we just thought about it dripping mm -hmm. with all kinds of stuff. We got our beets, we got our pickles, we got our barbecue sauce. By the way, here is our lunch lady coleslaw. I begged this lady to give me this recipe probably 30 years ago. Here it is right here. All right. So there's your third of sugar. And that's your third of white vinegar. And a whisk makes it nice. And let's not forget our mustard. mustard. If you like that sort of thing. Some people do, some people don't. But that's the base of the recipe. You'll have a great coleslaw right there. Now see how it gets that little yellow look there? Oh, oh. it depends on how much you want in here. Some people like theirs a little dry, some people like theirs soupy. Every bite I want to have some in there. I want to be able to taste that sauce. Is that perfect? It's perfect. Southern Lunch Lady Coleslaw. I like it. Look at there. Now that's the way a bun should look. Yummy. Look at that. Those are perfect. Beautiful. You ready for your pork? Yeah. So one thing I want to do right off the bat, on the top, I'm going to put some barbecue sauce. Yummy. I want quite a bit of barbecue sauce. You? I do. I love barbecue sauce. All right. I'm going to take a piece of my ooh, Your pork. chicken fried pork. Ooh, ooh. And then on top of that, I'm going to put our lunch lady coleslaw. Yum. These are some sweet and spicy pickles. Yummy. Ooh. That's a big sandwich. That is a big sandwich. and. You want cheese, you I always want, want cheese. cheese. I'll put Swiss. that on top. And you want a beets. I do, I love beets. All right, let's do it. Let's put a couple beets on there. We're gonna smash this all together. <laughs> and look what we got. Oh my goodness, yay! Whoa. <laughs> so, can I try the bite? Yes, go ahead. I right, remember, so this is a tater tot cup. How is it? <laughs> you love buffalo everything. Mmm. Wow. How can it not be good? Wow, that's Every delicious. ingredient in there is fantastic. Now, oh, you yeah. take a big bite of your ooey gooey sandwich. This is a huge sandwich. Wow. And then I'll take a bite. Oh, the pork. Mmm. <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow, that's delicious. Mm. That's a mm. big sandwich. Now, I'm telling you what, that's a fantastic kind of a spicy, oh, sweet yeah. mixture. And we're going to follow up here in a minute. In a minute, we're going to turn the lights off and eat this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fix you one, too. And then we're going to come back with my favorite. It's so simple, there's nothing to it. But when she makes my oatmeal cookies, <laughs> How many can I eat, honestly? I'm only making a half batch because you eat all of them. If I made them all, you might, I don't want all? you to get sick. How many is all of them? You're going to have a, it's probably a little over a dozen or two, so we'll see how many I get but out of really it. But they're really thin. Mm-hmm. Whatever. So there's that. Okay, we'll be right back after we take a bite here because this is our dinner. We're not faking it here. You deserve dessert. 
I do. Yes, you do. Oatmeal cookies, Nikki style. <laughs> All right, let's eat, cats. I have never watched you make these. Tell me why. Because you're always playing music or working on something. And what do I say, from upstairs or downstairs? You say oatmeal booties. <laughs> That's what Please you call. make me some oatmeal cookies. That's right. And she says, okay. You have never said no. I haven't, because I actually like to have a bite or two myself. You like chunky men, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> so these are fantastic. It's so simple. Mm -hmm. I start with a half a stick of butter, which is half a cup. So if you want to go ahead and get that mixing for me, I let half it. Half a stick or a whole stick? It's a whole stick of butter, but it's half a cup. Sorry. Ah, gotcha, yes. gotcha. And it's room temperature, so it's in pretty good shape there. So hey, it's... you know, I just thought of something. I know, I don't know how to make these now. So. You will. I, I won't have to do it. You can make your own. I'd rather you make them. All right. This is so simple. Half a cup of sugar. All right. We're gonna add that in. This is only a half bunch. Yeah, that's what I usually make you, and you eat them all. I do. Half a cup of brown sugar. All right. Put that in there. I'm gonna add one egg. All right. So that's where all that brown sugar taste comes mm -hmm. from. Some vanilla. We got a half a teaspoon. And it's pretty easy because it's the easy. Everything's half a teaspoon. All right. Let's get that oh, all creamy. Yeah. I smell it. Turn up a little and cream that up real good for us. That good? Yep. All right. And now we're, this is one cup of flour. That's all we need. And we are going to put. You're playing with the mixer. Half a teaspoon of baking powder. All right. Cinnamon. I'm gonna do half a teaspoon All of right. that. So this is this is what you make me every time. Yeah, this is just a basic, and there's so many different recipes. This is what I make you. Okay. Half a teaspoon of salt. So the last time you didn't make that many, we were making some kind of cookies or something, and um, you told me not to eat them because you were saving them for something. Yes, and you ate them all. I got you, and I got Kelly. You did. I can never get Kelly. You won't do that she again. She looked. <laughs> we'll never do that again. All right. All right, so my one cup of flour, right. my half teaspoon of baking soda, cinnamon, and salt. It's all gotcha. in this. Turn right. it on low for me so we Turn don't low. make a mess. And I'm going to slowly add this in. And I have the oven at 375. Oh. Well, we should have made a whole batch. That's all right. That'll be enough for you for the night. Go ahead for breakfast. Turn it off. Oatmeal's like cereal, That's right? right. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and take this off here now, because now we're going to add our oatmeal to it. And you like raisins, so we always oh, yeah. add. Some people add nuts, but I know like you love the raisins. Oh, I love the raisins. All right, this is my mixture. I have one and a half cup of oats here. Okay. Like I said, you can double this. I'm just yes, you could. doing you a half one because I'm trying to watch. You got to stay watch, healthy. Watch my right. weight. There you go. Half a cup of raisins. Actually, maybe a little over half a cup in there. See how simple that is? Mm, that's it. So you could be doing that. You could be making cookies all the time. I think I'm going to leave it to you because if I did it, I would cook a, a big batch and I'd cook them every day. <laughs> I'm going to make you a plate. What do you think? Is that like a oh, good size? Oh, man. So 10 to 12 minutes is all I yeah, got to wait. Yeah, that's all you got. Nikki, how many could you eat? I'll just eat one. I'm watching. So that leaves me 43. <laughs> okay. So you just pop them in three I only got 10 here because I'm thinking that's what you need. Now, I can make you another 10 for tomorrow. How's that? Tomorrow? You want them all tonight? All mm -hmm. right. Well, let's see how you do with these. Let's get right. these cooking. I bet I can do it. Oh. My belly's rolling. I'm starving. I haven't had anything starving? to eat for like Poor 10 baby. minutes. Look at that. All right, we can let them sit. <laughs> I'm gonna put them on here for you. How about I do you a little row? How's that? Yeah. How about a big row? All right, there's four. Do you want more? Let me go ahead and load it up. Now see, those aren't that big. No, see I made them little for you. And so it's oats, it's like cereal. Exactly. It's like I didn't eat cereal this, this morning. This is super healthy. Fiber? See, I'm leaving two here so Kelly and I will at least get a bite. That's your roll. How's it that? just takes just a minute for them to get like hard enough. That's right. But they're still gooey. They look beautiful. Look at that. I think if something really bad happened and all it was was oatmeal cookies to eat, I'd be just fine. You would. Can I time you as you eat them all? Or are you going to be eat just oh, I'm one gonna, I'm not going to. I'm not going to show right. what a, how bad I all am. All right, go ahead. Just eat one. Are you okay? The brown sugar makes it. You like that? You never don't like I don't care how I make mm. these cookies, you like them. I could change the recipe mm. every day and you still love them. No, that's your recipe. I recognize it. See how dainty I'm being? You are being dainty. You're eating slow. What's up with that? Okay. okay. This was a wonderful, fun meal. Mm -hmm. Just fun stuff to eat. But, Mrs. Farmer, mm -hmm. if some person came up to you and said so kind and respectfully, Mrs. Farmer, mm -hmm. where would I get all those recipes? What would you say to them? I say timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. I've been there because mm -hmm. I forget how much I put it in stuff and I have to I, look it up. Yes, me too. 
And also, if they want to join our Facebook page and show pictures of the meals, mm -hmm. like every Monday, people show pictures. I, I love looking at their stuff. Yeah. And they want to join our Facebook page. I know it's terribly difficult. What are the steps you have to go through to do that? You hit like. That's it? That's it. It's very simple. simple. I have no choice but to take these upstairs. I can't believe you left this little piece here. Well, I had to You're talk. You're trying to be? I okay. Had to talk. All right. I had to talk. I'm going to take these upstairs and quietly and peacefully yeah. make every one of those disappear. I say, I'll make you another tray and then I'll bring your dip up because you're going to, it's a long, going to be a long night, isn't it? It is. We might have to watch a movie okay. or two. Okay. So thank you for joining us tonight. That was a quick half hour. Mm -hmm. Our bellies are full. That's right. Almost. And it's all about <laughs> good times, good friends, really good eats. We'll see you next week on the Farmer's Kitchen right here. We have been catering for a lot of years and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been used on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub.